Foot Clan, we have a great show for you today. We'll check in on Jason, see his mental health after that Jalen Hurts news and what he's doing with his team. We know a lot of you are in the exact same situation. We've got ride or die on the show today. We're previewing Zach Wilson and the Jets on Thursday night football, jumping into the mailbag, and a whole lot of fun stuff on today's show. So make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Wednesday, December 21st. Welcome into the show, Jason, Mike, Andy, the Deucers. Always deucing. We are... What day is it? Very close <laughs> to a very important week. We we will get football tomorrow. Hopefully we get ourselves a game where we were discussing just before pressing record the perils of this Thursday night. Perils uh, of this week. <laughs> but yes, this Thursday night kicks off this week of <laughs> I'm just saying the, the you know, we were discussing a little bit of uh the the difficult matchup but also the the weather and the weather this week is outrageous. It's probably the coldest overall week of football in uh, recorded his months. <laughs> well, and, and the issues go well beyond like we got we got a good Miami Buffalo game in mm -hmm. the snow or in the cold, in you the know, cold, and then yeah. eventually the snow in the fourth quarter. But when you look at some of this potential sustained winds gusts in these matches uh, matchups. It, it, it's something to be concerned about. I mean, on one hand, the worst game of the week looks like it'll be New Orleans and Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there were pass catching weapons you were, you were, you know, counting on, I guess, to secure your fantasy football title. They were nerve wracking starts regardless. So maybe it makes it easier on you, but there are some matchups, the Buffalo game again this week, cold in Kansas city, where these forecasts may determine wins and losses more than we want them to. Yeah, and, and unfortunately may determine how those wins and losses come. It'll be much more in the running game, less in the passing game for the windy games. Wind is a much bigger deal than, than rain and snow, especially there's two games this, this week that are going to be 20-mile-an-hour sustained winds, gusts up to 40, insane. So something we'll be covering in our matchup previews this week, which we will – take care of the Thursday night game on today's show and then jump into all of the week 16 matchups tomorrow along with starts of the week. We have ride or die today. We have the mailbag. We've got Spotify live this afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's a lie. <laughs> That's the wrong time. Is it? Yeah. It's 4 p.m. Pacific. Nah. No, it's 3 p.m. Yeah, we aren't on Pacific anymore, so... Great, oh, that's right. Great, great job the first time around. <laughs> Nailed it. I see the times changing Four, over, in our, over in our dock. Well, it's 4 p.m. Mountain. Okay. What time is it central? What are you thinking? We'll do five? five? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard being here in Arizona where people change around us. That, I say we just start giving Arizona we just, time. We stand strong like the saguaro, rooted deep. Yeah. Mike has a real strong point there. If we Thank just you. do everything Arizona time, the rest of the world has to adjust to us. This would be super helpful on the show. Yeah. yeah. No one Why is no one here? <laughs> they don't know when we're doing it. Uh, Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. You want a bonus weekly show all year long. All the premium rankings. Come hang out. Yeah. Uh, quick question of the day comes in from Twitter. Brandon wants to know, after you get bounced out of the playoffs, <laughs> how do you fill your time? The dip in fantasy focus happens quickly. I stay involved in all, but I'm not reading as much or listening as much, uh, aside from the ballers, of course. Well, of course. 
yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is the, you know, th- there are seasons of life. I don't think that fantasy is very healthy at the same obsession level for 365 days a year. Things things change. We go down to two shows a week once the season's over. And so I don't think it's uh, – I think you could take a little breather here and there, but, um, you know, you definitely go from waiver wire obsessions to more downtime. Yeah, and I will tell you what I do. When, when, when I hit a year, all my teams happen to be knocked out of the playoffs. I've got nothing to – to uh, prepare for you know what I do I enjoy the NFL because <laughs> I watch football games and there's nothing going on in my tum tum and I just I'm like oh man and it, it, it's like well who do you want to win I don't care I just want great football no longer is it who do you want to win uh Christian McCaffrey that's who I want to win so I just I enjoy sports. That is a really, really <laughs> good point, Mike. I don't I, I I haven't remembered that this last week I, I had never, I don't know what it's like. I, this this last week <laughs> I had all my teams either out or on by, and I just didn't care. And I loved watch it was like such a great different experience just watching <laughs> football going to me. Man, what this game is fun. You'll save a, a lot of money on Pepto Bismol. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you'll save a lot of money on your post defeat meals. Oh man, that's that's the one that gets me. Jason dealing with Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Jason looks worse than after a long workout these oh, yeah. days because he's working out in the brain. Yeah, all the different scenarios. Yesterday he was just staring at the screen. I don't know if Jason got any work done. No, because every time we looked over at his his station, it was. It was our league. That's all he was looking at. <laughs> I'm frozen and wilting inside, guys. <laughs> I'm really struggling to uh, exist this week. Uh, any changes to your your current starting quarterback behind Jalen Hurts? Still Geno Smith right now. Um, we also have you know a bunch of fun off-season shows coming up, the Footy Awards, the Truth Episodes, 10 Things to Remember. So we'll recap. We'll have some fun. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll have some titles to celebrate. Sure. And you can always DFS. Yeah. You know, we got two sharp guys. You can listen to them. Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. Sharp brains, not sharply dressed. Well, oh. one of them dresses sharp. Yeah? Yes. Not, Which telling, you, not telling you who, but if, all <laughs> you mean, got to do is just watch. Yeah, just see the video. Just look. One of them rolled out of bed, threw, <laughs> kept, didn't change, just kept the pajamas on. Uh-huh. Nothing with their hair. Just let it be well, as, as they as, woke up. As Team Hat, I don't mind that. Throw I don't do anything to my hair. It just exists. All right. Ride or die time. Ride or die. Presented by Chevrolet. Last week, Jason yes. struck out. Oh, did I? Very yeah. impressive. Yes, yes, yes. You, uh. I don't know if I've seen that from you this year. No, I do not believe that has happened. I've had a very solid year and not a very solid week. But uh, Alvin Kamara did not end up as a top 15 running back. This is another week coming up where he faces Cleveland in a potentially rainy, windy game where you say to yourself, self, this is when I should be able to play Alvin Kamara. This freaking guy, man. (laughs) I mean, mean, he had over 100 yards last week. You know, he, he didn't have a bad playing game but he <laughs> had a bad that even mean fe- like well like her bad playing game my point is like in the nfl he he did not perform poorly he just really let you down for fantasy no touchdowns yeah, wasn't really offenses. involved in the receiving game and and yeah the saints offense is just a fart factory yeah, right we, now 21 carries for alvin Kamara. what are we doing here balance that out like just what yeah, with with, with some receptions like two uh, targets it's so bizarre to me, what is happening in New Orleans? I, they've look. Unfortunately, they've, they've become like my favorite punching bag because you have you have guys like Alvin Kamara. He is the rock of your offense, superstar running back, has the contract to prove it. Sixty-two percent of the snaps got a whole bunch of opportunities, but like sixty-two percent of the snaps, and then you're Taysom Hill, just tons of money, not really playing a lot. 
Olave, the snaps went down. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that makes me sad. Yeah. Uh, Olave snaps went down. Like, which uh, maybe he's dealing with some injury. I get, Got a hamstring. And it, but it's like all of these guys who are your featured players are part-time players. It's, it's, it's blowing my mind what they're doing over there. Jerry, Judy, uh, we looked at 10 fantasy points. Uh, Mike and I rode with Jerry, Judy. He ended up barely getting that. And then Tua, uh, two passing touchdowns. I was the only one to stand with Tua last week against Buffalo. Week 16 ride or die predictions. Brooks has prepared some uh, tough ones for us. What do we have? All right, guys, and this line has already been lowered since the show started. <laughs> I just saw it change. Amari Cooper in the uh, weather game, as you mentioned, versus Saints. Can he get to eight fantasy points, which is our – we mentioned the truth episodes coming up. That's our metric last year for a, under eight points is a bust performance. So we know the weather's bad. This is the lowest over-under game in a decade. We know Voldemort has not been slinging it. He's – made Amari Cooper into a, a Harry Potter. Uh I mean six points, five point two, seven. Wants nothing 8. to do with him. Uh I'm gonna ride. Okay, you think he gets to that eight I think he gets points. to eight fantasy points, yeah. I'm thrilled to hear you ride. I am going to choose die. This is uh, I mean, if you look at his past three weeks, he hasn't hit eight fantasy points. This game's uh makeup is yeah, I know you said that. I'm saying <laughs> I'm I'm saying this game's weather is worse and he hasn't gotten there. So I will I I do not believe this is the week it changes. Seemed like you're very sure you were going die when that line was set. Mike, it's a ridiculously low line that Amari Cooper should easily surpass. Uh I mean one catch in the end zone will take care of it, but I'm going to go Oh man. I'm going to I'm going to say die. All right. Um great. I'm riding with Amari Cooper. That feels awesome. Yeah. Brooks, what's our second ride or die prediction? All right, guys. The new hotness, Jarek McKinnon. Oh baby. Back to back running back one finishes. Will he be in the top 15 this week versus Seattle? This is a brutal yes. situation because I think we would all say that Jarek McKinnon is not the number one running back in fantasy football. Um but he has been for two consecutive weeks. There's a, been a lot of room for him to roam and find free space. And uh, top 15, that's definitely achievable if you're catching passes. Seattle, I think they'll keep up a little bit in Arrowhead. Right, so top 15 is our – okay, so top 15. And Jarek McKinnon <sighs> has been above the top 15 how many times this year? Two. That's my guess. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah, the answer would be two. I believe he was 16 a couple weeks yeah. before that. It, it it has been a trend so I don't, for his opportunities. I think you have to I'm going to go ride. I'm going to go ride. I don't I don't think he gets he does what he has done the past couple of weeks, but I I think the team is finding success using Jared McKinnon. Um and so that is a recent trend I think will continue enough to be top 15. I definitely want him in my lineup. Yeah, that I'll I'll jump in here. That's what's difficult about when we're playing these types of games because, to me, McKinnon's about as close to a a must start running back too as we get at this point. You have to stay like he's on fire. NBA Jam rules state you must play Jarek McKinnon, but top fifteen is really rich. So it's like you don't want to say die and then technically he's just heating up, right? No, no, no. Running back sixteen. Oh, sixteen. Yeah, okay. that, that's, All right. that's green. Green means go. Like. I don't want to say he's not top 15, as in don't play him. Uh, You're going to have to ride or die. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just I'm trying to lay it out here. I'm going to ride. I'm going to okay, ride with McKinnon. You're going to ride. Jason, are you? Uh, yeah, I, I have him at running back 15. It's tough to not take the field to, to grab exactly. onto that last spot. With you two riding, I'm going to choose die, but I echo what you're saying. I, I'm playing Jarek McKinnon. I'm staying in the flames. To me, this is whether or not the touchdowns happen to go his way. The touchdowns will be plentiful for the Kansas City Chiefs offense. The last few weeks, they've all gone to Jarek McKinnon, or at least several of them have gone his way. Those three matchups, he's had multiple touchdowns in two and a touchdown in the third. If the touchdowns happen to go to Juju Smith-Schuster and more to Travis Kelsey this week, and who has just such a great matchup against Seattle who can't yeah. stop tight ends, 
then I think Jarek McKinnon has a good game, doesn't crack the top 15 if he doesn't get a touchdown. And the final one here, Brooks set the line for Zay Jones. Oh, oh no. Had seven or more targets. Here we go. And Zay Jones was a name that was brought up before the show. We were talking about decisions being made. you got to play him on Thursday. The rain, it, it could be um, coming down. So seven-plus targets in nine of 13 games. The last five weeks, Zay Jones is on 174 target pace. This team hasn't been able to run the football very well. They've also found a lot of success in kind of broadening what Trevor Lawrence is allowed to do in the offense. So I am a ride, ride, ride man this week. I think seven or more targets. Uh, Zay Jones is kind of where he's starting to look. Uh, we saw three touchdowns last week. I I think he can get it done. I think the Amon Ross St. Brown line for the Lions last week against these Jets is what you'll see from Zay Jones. I really like that this line is set on targets, not the results of those targets. I think that the matchup against uh, the, the Jets, the potential uh, weather problems in this game might make a few of them uncatchable with pressure in his face, or maybe Sauce Gardner uh, might find his way to one of those targets or two. I'm going to ride with the targets, though. I do think he gets thrown the ball seven-plus times in this game. I agree. I'll ride with the targets, but it, like, it doesn't guarantee success. Well, let, beyond the ride or die, do you think that Zay Jones is going to have a worthwhile fantasy week? I have him as a three right now, which is definitely playable in almost all formats. The 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 tremendous success, three of the last four games, but like I said, seven targets doesn't guarantee success. He had that against Detroit in week 13. Seven targets turned into two for 16. So bad it, it targets doesn't mean that he will, he will – uh, be incredible, but I'm still going to play him. The last five weeks, the Jets, fancy points given up to wide receivers. Oh, interesting. 15.2 to New England. 17.8 to Chicago. Okay, those are not wide yes. receiver cores of, of note. Right. Minnesota, 26.6. Buffalo, 14.1. And that was uh, – those. both of those games were on the road – then Detroit last week, 27.8. That was the most that they've given up, I believe, since week three. So it's not been easy going no. against the Jets. And uh, so that'll be – it'll be actually – I'm looking forward to Thursday night. I really am. I. It's funny because you guys brought up the fact that – what was it? Was it Denver and the Rams? This was like supposed to be this – you know, Christmas Day yeah. game. Gift. A gift to us all. And then you've got like Jets Jacksonville on Thursday. And at the beginning of the year, we probably would have been saying, what a junk Thursday night game. Whereas I'm I'm looking forward to it. The Jacksonville Jaguars control their own destiny. The Jets, there's a lot of storylines there. You, you can't have a game be much more important for both teams than, than this matchup is. I mean, you, you've got two teams fighting for their playoff lives. It's great. Yeah, and Zach Wilson. I mean, theater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tr Trevor Some Lawrence. People love horror movies. Trevor Lawrence <laughs> looking good. Can he continue that against a really tremendous defense? Zach Wilson looking bad. Can he continue that? Probably. Can he continue the trend? <laughs> um, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. Um, I was hoping that maybe after all that staring at the computer yesterday, Jason, you had made the tough decision to start Zach Wilson tomorrow. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't. Corey have, Davis might be playing. I don't have the heart or he the strength or the the willpower, the courage, any uh, any, any of those to to do that. I know, but I wish I could pay you to do that. All right, news time. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. You you're underestimating that if you went out and you got a dominant performance from Zach Wilson on Thursday. That would be so intimidating to your opponent. The rest of his players may lay down. Well, then I might, might do roll it. Them out. We'll, we'll find out. So this week, week 16, you got a Thursday night game. You got 11 Saturday games. So the main slate is Saturday. You got three Sunday games on Christmas, and then you got Monday night football. So what I am seeing there from the schedule is my wife will be unhappy with me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, we're in quite a pickle here. This is, I mean, this is football all the time. Christmas weekend. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I'm celebrating. This is going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Uh, some news for you. Nick Chubb didn't practice on Tuesday due to a foot injury. 
Now, he's a Saturday game. So Tuesday's the new Wednesday. Correct. That's the hope. There's a, several players here that basically popped up as did not participate on, on Tuesday. You don't usually see that, but it's very common for them to not participate in Wednesday. The practice schedule, though, is shifted forward today. So there's hope that this is you know one of those situations where they're just resting them, but because some of these players have new injuries popping up, like it, it's actually listed as a foot injury, there's fear. Well, I mean, have, has Nick Chubb missed any Wednesdays due to a foot injury? No, but we had the exact same thing happen with the exact same injury with Derrick Henry earlier in the year where he popped up on a Wednesday that he has not missed with a foot injury. And he went on to play and has not missed any time, so there's hope and there's fear. Yeah, one eyebrow up. <laughs> right, yes, one eyebrow. Chris Olave didn't practice due to a hamstring injury. This could explain a little bit of the snap situation for yeah, Olave could. and the lack of production if he's been managing a hamstring. Another one to watch, one eyebrow up, maybe two eyebrows say, up on that one. At this point, how do you play Olave with any semblance of confidence? With, yeah. the, with the wind and... Are with him being just poor for fantasy. He's been on a downward trajectory. The snap counts have been going down. Uh, he's got a fellow rookie wide receiver who's been running more routes than him. And then you've got the injury. I think this is a one eye closed situation. <laughs> Wait, a wink? You no, know, more like a you know you're squinting and you're looking. Okay. You're just looking through one eye. One eyed eye. wince. Yeah. Like the. You Are know. there rumors of Carson Wentz starting again? By the way, I. Uh, I thought I'm, I saw some I'm rumblings. sure those will start spiraling. When you around. said Wentz, I just <laughs> yeah, I there, there was there, I saw a, a quote from Rivera saying you know Wentz being healthy kind of makes things more difficult, but I haven't heard that he's going to take over yet. But so of the past seven, twenty six mile an hour wins <clears throat> of the past seven games for Chris Olave, he has been sub wide receiver forty in five of them. Yeah, he's he's brutal. He's not been good because the. I mean, this is what we're talking about with Kamara. Like, there aren't enough regular chances for the Saints to make you excited, and I think Olave is a full bench as of right now. Yeah, the, the, I would agree. I mean, how do you, how do you play him in in twenty six mile an hour wind on a thirty two point over under with a hamstring? Because yeah, the red you, rifle is going to cut through. Oh gosh! <laughs> pew pew pew. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Saints, have, they scored 21 points this last game, which isn't a ton, and that was the most they've scored in a month. Is there – Do you, you guys love Sean Payton, right? Yes. He, I, As I a think, football I coach. I think that he's a good offensive coach, yes. Okay. So you do, is there any thought that that was just a breeze thing with Sean Payton? Oh, for sure. Yeah, they, until, in, until I'm, it, the coach proves otherwise, I mean, I, I will – I will believe that he is a good offensive mind and yet have skepticism that he goes into a different situation that it may not be as good. Okay. I'll bet Peyton gets to pick a situation where he has a quarterback is my sure, guess. But, but it's it like if Bill Belichick, like Tom Brady is gone and they had a, you know, a, a little bit of success last year. They're doing okay ish this year. Is, and it's just you're when you're tied to a, a hall of fame quarterback, it covers up a lot of mistakes. That's fair. Jalen Hurts. That's a DMP on Tuesday. I think it's a presumed DMP. Because did they not practice? I did they not, practice? I don't know if there was, was an official. but I don't think there was an official. They, uh, but, the, the, the word is, like, you know, you got the coaching staff saying that they're going to have a game plan for both of them. Uh, I mean, on a Wednesday, if I'm if I'm betting, I'm betting he's sitting out. Um, it, it, so Jason, Jalen Hurts. Let's. I guess the conversation is this: If Jalen Hurts does play, right back in, no hesitant, hundred percent back in without hesitation for okay. me. I don't think there's any waiver wire. Uh, even guys that you had previously had, um, I had been holding on to Geno because he's got a great matchup against Kansas City. Andy, you brought up uh, Jared Goff this morning beforehand, who I would play over Geno if I had those level guys and Jalen Hurts is active. Jalen Hurts is 100% okay. in my lineup. Ryan Tannehill, status uncertain, uphill battle, team signed Josh Dobbs off the practice squad. Tannehill doesn't look very promising for this week. Nope. And uh, you can say goodbye to Chica Conquo and Traylon Burks if he's back and any pass catcher if that's the case. Uh, this was, you know, the Ravens, they're hurting, man. Devin Duvernay 
on to IR. Um, they signed Sammy Watkins oh, baby. off of waivers. Oh, he's back. <laughs> I, I, I'm so happy we have the uh, the non-marked jersey for Sammy <laughs> Watkins because he just keeps – you never know what team he's going to be on on any given week. No. Whatever, whatever team is hurting the most, <laughs> that's who will have to pick up Sammy Watkins. Jacoby Myers limited due to a concussion. Wait, uh, what? Uh, this is one to monitor. He played this last week. He cleared concussion protocol and played. Oh, his head slammed on the last play. Oh, no. Did, did not see because all we saw was uh, Mac Jones hitting the ground. I did not realize that. And then uh, we've got Ken Walker didn't practice due to an ankle. On the Tuesday. On the Tuesday. So. Tyler Lockett, finger surgery. He may only miss one game. Because the surgery went perfect. <laughs> Dak, you can. Uh, he was supposed to be gone. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you assumed he was going to miss back. a couple of weeks, and they hope to get him back at the end of the year. But uh, man, surgery went perfect. So that's. I mean, isn't that kind of this? That's like, the goal if, of surgery. Yes, the yeah. goal of all surgeries is to go perfect. If if a surgery surgery can only go one of two ways, perfect or bad. No. What if I like? Well, Jason, the surgery went almost perfect. How does that make you feel? That makes me feel like it went pretty <laughs> bad. Like if I had a doctor who just finished working on me, and he said the surgery went almost perfect. I would go, what went wrong? Because something did not go as no, expected. No, almost perfect. That's bad. It's bad on the scale of surgeries. Is it? <laughs> yes. I feel pretty good with almost perfect on a surgery. It, what if it's your heart? <laughs> almost. Well, we, we almost got it perfect. I just feel like perfect is hard to achieve. Did yeah. you fix the issue mostly? <laughs> <laughs> mostly. <laughs> All right. A.J. Dillon cleared concussion protocol. That's what I say. It was weird of what was going on with him, but and he will then, be back. And then. And Skoranek. Hey. Do, 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 do. Uh, unfortunately, he's out for the rest of the season yeah, no with a calf that. strain. So uh, uh, also sign up the, your 2-2 two, two Atwells. Also, the oh Rams uh, center, I believe, is done for the year. I think I saw that. So, they're they're as we've said, they're closing up shop. Play your streaming defenses against the Rams. The opposing team trying to get into the stadium. <laughs> yeah, the, There's a board. There's did you boards forget up. to unlock the stadium? That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Well, uh, here we are on the precipice of the semifinal. Have you guys given some pep talks to your teams this week? Have you talked to them? Have you rallied the troops, Jason, behind Gino? I have been afraid to speak to my roster right now. He doesn't even know who his starter is. How can I, he talk to I, him? I looked at your, your little matchup this week. Oh, yeah? I, I have as well. I just don't really think you can lose. Oh, I don't like hearing... That kind of uh, <laughs> announcer jinx, but yeah. um, I I look at it as well, and I see many many a path. I, well, to be I looked at my roster against this same opponent, and I said, "There's no way I'm going to lose." I, here's here's the thing that's interesting to me about your league of record matchup, which I'm sure you will bring the Foot Clan on that ride this weekend, uh, either through for cathartic purposes or celebration purposes, but. It's interesting because you made a decision earlier in the year to send a pick and George Kittle away mm -hmm. to pick up Dalton Schultz, and you just happened to be playing that team. So the Dalton Schultz v. Kittle matchup will be a very interesting one to watch. To this point, it worked out very well for me. Uh, Kittle had down weeks. Schultz had up weeks. I got the bye. I was on bye when Kittle had his monstrous week, so now the head-to-head -head matchup will be extra interesting. <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. Well, we get Jacksonville, New York, Thursday Night Football. Jacksonville 6-8. and eight. The Jets are 7-7. Seven and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here now. New York minus one. Over under is 36.5. So, that's not a lot. And uh, the, the weather report I'm seeing right now at kickoff, there'll be rain. During the first quarter, rain. Second quarter, rain. During the third quarter, there'll be some rain. Oh, During the fourth, the fourth quarter, it's going to be rainy. Temps are supposed to be in the 40s, which is fine. 
a 10 to 15. Not when it's raining. A 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. 15 miles an hour is kind of that number where it starts to have oh, an effect gosh. on the passing game. So you're like, well, 10 is okay. 15 is less okay. Which which is it? This 10 to 15 range is, let's be more on the 10 side. And it, to be fair, Zach Wilson, when he throws the ball, it always looks like there's a little bit of wind. And rain. Slippery ball. <laughs> <laughs> Just so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you watch some of the way that it, uh, you know, flies off the hand. Seems like it must have been wet. Jacksonville, the tenth seed, control their own destiny. They play uh, a really, really manageable schedule down the stretch. The Jets, Houston, Tennessee. The Jets are the ninth seed. They play Jacksonville, Seattle, Miami. Jacksonville's offense is fourth in points scored over the last five games, fifth in total yards, third in expected points per pass attempt while the Jets' defense has been elite. They're fourth in points allowed. So this is a something's-got-to-give situation. Uh, I, I hope we see more sustained drives than I think we're going to. Trevor Lawrence. This is where it all starts. What do you do here? Top 12 and 7 of 9 starts. No Kyler, no Lamar, no Jalen Hurts, potentially. Trevor Lawrence is one of those players that, you know, you either choose Trevor Lawrence in a tough matchup on the basis of how good he's been – or you go to a lower tier, better matchup situation with a streamer. Right. I think it would be very hard for me to put Trevor Lawrence on the bench, despite all of the check marks against him in this one. Yeah, this is. I mean, the question that is on most managers' mind, including our own, is the passing game for the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence has been a top five quarterback three of the last four weeks. Zay Jones has been unstoppable, and now you've got this really smoking hot offense going up against such a good defense and man I don't I find myself when I'm push comes to shove when I was looking at waiver wire pickups when I'm looking at my dynasty start sit decisions I find myself personally actually putting in other options ahead of the Jaguars mm. tell me and Andy I think you find yourself on the side of sticking with the Jaguars through the tough matchup against the Jets so Mike, where do you land? Well, since week four, every quarterback not named Josh Allen has finished quarterback 17 or worse against the Jets. Jared Goff salvaged a day with a ridiculous trick play that turned into a 60-yard uh, uh, tight end screen, essentially. Because uh, And if the Jets cover a ridiculous play, Goff does not have a, a good day at all. Uh <laughs> But for me, I'm trying to ask, has Trevor Lawrence taken the step where, like, you're good quarterbacks, you're, you're looking at the Jets, and you're not thinking about it. You're just saying, this is my, this is my franchise, my, my fantasy franchise quarterback, and I'm going to put him out there because he has the, the weapons, he has the offense. Aaron Rodgers against Miami in oh. Miami or Trevor Lawrence? I would go, oh, my gosh. I, I That's juicy. So I made that exact decision that's juicy um in a league and i picked up aaron Rodgers, daniel jones at minnesota i or trevor lawrence i have them back to back if i had both i would play trevor lawrence okay that's where i would go on that one the, the other one's more difficult yes the rogers one is very tough but i might stay in the flames with with trevor lawrence he's been the highest graded passer on passes 10 to 19 yards he's been fantastic the problem that I have in this game is is a little bit to do with will the Jets score points? Sure. Because the over under is very low. Zach Wilson has, you know, he, he made a couple plays last week. In between those plays, he looked like Zach Wilson. <laughs> uh, but the the matchup's so great. They're at home. Jacksonville is is bad. I mean, they've allowed every quarterback not named Russ Wilson to finish top 12. Yeah, and so I think that it's going to be a better than advertised day for for well, Mr. Zach Wilson. I would I would I would wrap myself in those statistics like a blanket had Zach Wilson not just played the Detroit Lions in a very plus matchup and I, I know he got the two touchdowns but it wasn't Yeah, he was the number 9 quarterback on the week. Oh, what, what? 317 yeah. passing yards, oh, two touchdowns. I forgot he got over I 300. I think you might be watching that one play over and over I, again yeah, too much. Yeah, I'm watching well a lot of his plays. It, what 18 of 35. It, 
Yeah, that's not good. He was, but three hundred and two yeah. is what you hope you could get. Out I of guess this the game. the poor play was no match for the the good fantasy matchup, and he still finished with a decent week. But I mean, I'm not playing Zach Wilson because I can't live with that that type of a situation where that's the quarterback I'm trusting for my fantasy playoffs. But may, maybe he can keep things up for for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, this is this is so interesting. People are going to have to call their shot on on what they believe because I'm not worried about the rain for the Trevor Lawrence side. I'm worried about the rain for the Zach Wilson side. The Jacksonville Jaguars. You look at their last several matchups. Uh, they gave up six points more than the average uh, of uh, Dallas, six points more than the average of Tennessee, five points more than the average of Detroit. It just goes like this to basically every week they give up more fantasy points to that quarterback than that quarterback's average. It's a very plus matchup. And if Zach Wilson can do something in this plus, plus matchup, then y you feel that the Jacksonville weapons will be good. So... Corey Davis should be back full practice on th um, Tuesday. Will they be able to run more though? You had uh, it on of a night. It was it was a poor game, uh, and the Detroit Lions have been able to shut down running backs. Do they go back to that as their form of attack? Yeah, on are offense? you are you playing Zonovan Knight? <sighs> it was a really disappointing week. I mean, thirteen for twenty three. Yeah, it got a little against bit Detroit, up. but again, we said it before the game. Yes. Detroit has shut everyone down. I feel confident in the with the weather situation to play Zonovan Knight here. Yeah, I, I do think Zonovan Knight is going to get more work in the running game because of the weather. The the issue and the question that we had there were there were two. One was Detroit's been so good against the run and they continued to be. The other was Zach Wilson doesn't really throw to the running backs the way that <clears throat> all the other quarterbacks have been doing that, and Zonovan had exactly zero targets. So one of those is gone. I like the matchup against the Jaguars, but you still have Zach Wilson in a rainy game. I doubt, you know, that there's uh, more passing, but he should Bam, be fine on the ground. I think Bam he'll have Knight versus Deion Jackson. Sorry, I would go Deion Jackson, but I think I'm I think I'm higher on Deion Jackson yeah, than most people. I I'm not positive he'll get the volume, so I would go Bam Knight there. But what about Zonovan versus touchdown or bust Jamal Williams? Against the Carolina Panthers, I'll play Zonovan. Yeah, I, I think Zonovan okay. is hotter right now. Jamal Williams is uh, ceding more work to Swift to Justin Jackson and Justin Jackson. Truth. If Corey Davis is back, is it Garrett Wilson or no one else? Yeah, I I dropped uh, Elijah Moore this morning in a league where it seems like you should be able to play him, and uh, with Corey Davis back. Zach Wilson in tow, bad weather, low over under. I can't imagine relying in a playoff week on Elijah Moore. Where are you with Christian Kirk right now? <sighs> not a good place. Uh, not a good. All right. So on the season, he's still the wide receiver ten, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He's been red light, green light the last month. Uh, ten for or ten targets, six for ninety two uh, against the the Dallas Cowboys. Again, Trevor Lawrence was red hot. In that matchup, so it's, I guess when I say not great, I'm saying I'm not the wide receiver ten. That's not who I'm expecting. I'm getting if I'm if I'm trying to play a low level wide receiver two, then that's all right because the volume has been there for him, even if the production isn't always following. In over the last five weeks, Zay Jones has been the wide receiver five. Do you play Zay Jones above Christian Kirk? Christian Kirk has been the wide receiver 25 in that stretch. I, Over the last five weeks? That's the last five weeks. Zay Jones averaging almost 19 fantasy points a game, whereas Christian Kirk is down at 9.7. I'm still on the Christian Kirk side. I mean, obviously a three-touchdown game this last week. Touchdowns are going to really swing where the fantasy points go. Over the course of the season, the touchdown guy has been more Christian Kirk. And Christian Kirk's operating more out of the slot, so I'm really interested to see – with the hotness of Zay Jones, does Sauce Gardner find himself more on Zay or more on Christian Kirk, who's operating out of the slot? It's very interesting. I, mean, I see these guys extremely similar. Well, like I don't going to be on Kirk. Over the last eight weeks, they've almost been the same. Fifteen point three fantasy points per game for Zay Jones. Thirteen point nine for Kirk. Yeah, so I, I see them very, very similar. I would start Kirk over Zay Jones in you know, but they're both basically low end. Wide receiver two, high end wide receiver threes for me this week. Schmevin? I mean, do you want any Schmevin? 
Sh- you you can shmevin any any given week. I've got a shmevin question mm-hmm. because I I'm looking at this and I I keep going back and forth. So my question is shmevin shmingram. Yes. Who's been on fire? Yeah, you've been great. In, you've been in shmevin heaven yes. for a while. Well done. Um, or Dallas Goddard, much better player, but first week back against Dallas with a backup quarterback. Shmevin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Wait, do you have Schmevin in the league of record? Uh, no, that oh, is a different league. Yeah, okay. I, I guess I would go. I would go Schmevin because of the quarterback variable in that Dallas game. But yeah, it's tough. I don't know, Mike. Look, you know I love Evan Ingram, so I'll just I'll just go with that. You just stay there. <laughs> All the rankings, the start, sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Don't forget to take a little peek at your waiver wire, see who people drop this week. They might have gotten, you know, they're going to be more desperate for a one-week player, so somebody valuable could have been dropped uh, that you could end up using after injury to somebody this week. Something will happen this week that will put, you know, it'll, Jalen Hurts situation, the Jonathan Taylor situation, Every week it happens, and then all of a sudden you you could be ahead of the game, not scrambling for the backup. Um, Darren Waller or Schmevin Schmingrel? Ooh, that's that's interesting. Uh, Waller was only forty nine percent of the snaps. He he still ran a, a decent amount of routes, but his day was made totally by that one touchdown play. I would imagine he'll like things will go up this week, so I would go. I'll go Darren Waller. Same. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. All right. We did discuss that Jalen Hurts situation, quarterback options and stuff uh, in great detail on yesterday's episode, if you want to listen to that. Also had the full stream ahead segment yesterday where we talked about all the different quarterback streaming options. Uh, the first question comes from Twitter. Are you still playing A.J. Brown with Jalen Hurts out? Yes. Yeah. J. A.J. Brown, because of his physical stature, I feel much more confident in than even Devontae Smith to help Gardner Minshew because you can, you know, it's he's like Brandon Marshall. You know, you you just force feed him the ball and he's he's going to make up for mistakes that you make and he's going to be able to muscle um, the defender. And, and you have, look, Gardner Minshew is not a bad quarterback. He's been a starter before. He's one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. He is, you know, you look at DeAndre Hopkins when he has Colt McCoy is still a a fine play. Now, if you go all the way down to uh, Trace McSorley, Trace McSorley, now you got question marks. But uh, Gardner can get it done with a talent like AJ Brown. Yeah, he's he's a really good player. I mean, he was a starter in this league, and his time coming in as a backup has been good. So, uh, we'll move on to a voicemail question. Reminder: If you have a question for the show, go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Into the voicemail we go. Yo, would you guys start Garrett Wilson or Devonta Smith this week, assuming Hurts doesn't play? Because if Hurts plays, I'm going Devonta. Thank you. (laughs) I would as well. (laughs) So the question is, Devonta Smith or Garrett Wilson, but also letting us know. What you say will not matter. If yeah, Jalen if, Hurts if Jalen Hurts is in, then you guys can no, shut I, up. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know Jalen Hurts is, is going to miss this game. So uh, this is an this is an easy Garrett Wilson for me. Uh, I mean, the the thing about it is you have to make your decision, right? Because Garrett Wilson is Thursday. Thursday night. You're not going to know if Jalen Hurts is going to play. So you, you might. You might. They could rule him out. Before Thursday, but but sure. you're right. There's a chance that you don't. But I I would go Garrett Wilson in that situation. Yeah, I think with Dallas Goddard, the matchup's so good against Jackson. Dallas Goddard though. being back, and the splits when when Smith and Goddard were both playing, Smith was not doing anything close to the level that he has the last month. I'd go with Garrett Wilson. Okay, boy, they just missed on a couple last week too, Big and he play. still had ninety plus yards, ninety eight yards. That dude wants to win so bad. He's so good. I love Garrett Wilson. Having a hard time in our league of record deciding whether he should just belong in the franchise tag area. Oh, my. But he probably won't. All right, voicemail question. Hey, ballers, this is Mike. I had Jalen Hurts. I have no backup quarterback. 
and I have zero fab left, and my league mates are uh, colluding together to pick up every single uh, starting quarterback. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I will not have a quarterback. Thanks. Bye. So, so I don't know if you guys saw I, the I tweet. Did. I, I, did. I shared it in our Slack. It was not just a, I think that the other people in this league are working against me. It's no. In the league chat, they laid out a full instruction manual of which manager picks Steve, up. Steve, you pick up Purdy for which 14 quarterback and, and Tannehill for 11. And which fab amounts for every single quarterback. And it was. Dave, you go grab uh, like Trubisky. So, like, that, like, you know that I'm team. Let let the backup, let the uh, the people who are not in it make some moves. But that was way over the line. Well, that's, that is, that's pure collusion. That's, that's collusion. Well, and someone was like, but is it collusion if everybody is – it's not two teams <laughs> working together to benefit each other or one team. It's everybody is so together. We had we had quite a spirited discussion before the show, before you guys got in here. Kyle, who's on the microphone, uh, Papa Josh, we were talking about this scenario, and Kyle seemed to be – put on your big boy pants. You should have had a backup plan. You should have – Oh, wow. You should have had fab. Kyle. Oh, man. I want everyone to field a roster. Let me be clear on that, but I like chaos. So, so here's what I think. I, if you are the team playing the Jalen Hurts manager and you go to the league and you say, everybody do this for my benefit, that's where it kind of crosses the line of yeah, collusion to trash. me. But it doesn't mean there's not nuance here. Like, if you make the league aware of the situation – in whatever subtle fashion you want, that's fine. That's your – I mean, we had somebody in our league, Jason's in that boat. He jumped on the chat and he said, hey, should I be spinning my fab to – I think he was just making a joke because I don't think he has he any was. fab. And he was just saying, should I spin my fab on blocking you? I mean, look, if, if people pick up backups ahead of the Jalen Hurts manager, that manager's going to be pretty upset. Look, the qu my question here is why are we – why are you going after that person? Like, why are you propping up the other manager trying to guarantee that they get an easier path I'll to victory? I'll tell you why. It has to be someone dominating their league That's what I was going to say. If you have Jalen Hurts, you probably are whooping everybody. So, in most cases, I, I would say that this is where the rubber meets the road on the question we had earlier in the week. Do you want non-playoff teams to be participants in the waiver wire? Because the only purpose of, I mean, and you both were like, yeah, let's do it. I want to burn people down. I mean, Mike, yeah. that was your. Oh, yeah. That was your. So let me ask you, in this situation, you're out of the playoffs in League of Record. Jason, now he has a backup already. Right. But if he didn't, are you participating in, the, this is rubber meets the road. Are you participating in our, in, in removing a quarterback from Jason's op, uh, options? In our, I mean, I already have, uh, well, I have Jared Goff and who will? Oh, Dan, I already have Daniel Jones. Like, so I already have two of the streaming options, which will stay securely on my roster. Uh, that's my contribution to inflict pain upon Jason. Uh, but like ours is a is a little bit different because it's a keeper league. If there was somebody out there that I thought had keeper potential, uh, I would go get them. And if that means I have to drop a quarterback that benefits somebody else on, on the in the league, that's a decision that I'm going to make because I'm going to make my team better. Yeah, I mean the the issue here for our league. The issue here is really the fact that it's it's people working together for yes. the detriment. It's not just player X is going. I'm going to get that guy, yeah. and so I'm going after him. This is player X saying, "Hey, Y and Z and A and B, let's let's get in this together to stop another." team and make sure and, we don't have overlap and that to me is where it crosses the line if i was player c in that <laughs> league if you're following me i'd drop my quarterback if i'm out of the playoffs give him someone else to pick up if you're <laughs> if you guys gonna play like that play dirty uh but yeah i mean i i would hope that the league doesn't actually follow through i imagine that that was that was not all the league agreeing to do that post right i don't know yeah i mean it, there's definitely lines of collusion here for sure I mean, if 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 you're organizing a plot against one manager, that's colluding against one manager. But uh, if independent, free-thinking managers want to make that decision on their own without 
you know, back channel discussions of how do we get this guy, then that's just this is why you should have some fab. I mean, there is some there is some accountability for yes. your own roster. Have a have a backup plan. I mean, it, it's not your first rodeo. Injuries happen all the time. Also, I would uh, if I'm this manager, the one that left the voicemail saying there's no quarterbacks to pick up, and you know the, the everybody's scooping them up. I'm still picking up someone, uh, some backup quarterback. Driscoll. I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, Driscoll or a backup quarterback and throwing him in my lineup just in case an injury happens mid game versus getting a flat out zero in the playoffs. And there are all there are also quarterbacks like I didn't see the poster. I guess for this voicemail, you know, Malik Willis and Trace McSorley and uh, Gardner Minshew. There are guys that are coming into starting roles this week that are 100 percent, you know, available on most. Uh, waiver wires go after the least of them put someone in your lineup all right a uh, twitter question from the bruce dickinson what's the best time zone for being a football fan it's <laughs> a very interesting question yeah, yeah it's funny we've had uh recently a couple of east coasters fly out here and experience the 11 a.m football which some of the years 10 a.m football they love it i think that I would prefer the East Coast time where I get the whole day and I'm a night owl anyway so I don't mind watching football till midnight my preference I think would be the later games which I think you're in the vast minority I agree everybody that. that's ever come out west has embraced and been excited about it and mostly because of the late nights you know I think it would get old like even if I'm into it in the beginning I think it'd get old staying up until one and two in the morning having to watch these games every night but so Arizona. Yeah, I'll take Mountain. Give me give me Mountain Standard Time because at least then when they have all those international games, it's not egregiously early. What do I do with DeAndre Hopkins if Colt McCoy doesn't start? Is he even a flex? This is Ryan Hudo. Oh my goodness! You play DeAndre Hopkins. He's the he's the leading receiver in the NFL since his return. Most receptions in the NFL. So to me, you you just have to play him. You may temper your expectations, but um. That's my view. I, I can't imagine sitting the leading NFL yeah. receiver regardless of the quarterback. It is a – I think that's an, this is an impossible situation. So you just go with your talent. Because, dude, like Trace McSorley, that was, that was some bad football being played once he came in. I mean, l let, me, let me put some names to this just to, just to make sure. Because if Trace McSorley comes out, you would expect maybe he gets 150 – passing yards uh, maybe you know and uh li limited throwing would you play Juju Smith-Schuster against Seattle Patrick Mahomes no I think it's a fair question I mean last week just to be fair and I don't know how many came with Colt McCoy but he was knocked out really early in that game he was still seven for 60 on 11 targets DeAndre Hopkins was yeah I don't I don't know what the actual splits are so I, I mean, I, I don't, it, I couldn't it, go down to Mick, Juju. Mick Sorley played forty six percent, so he was basically fifty fifty. Okay, I don't, I and again, I don't remember what his stats were. Look, I'm not excited about Mick Sorley. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I just think that the targets will be there. What about a uh, Zay Jones, someone that might have been picked up, and he's been on fire? But obviously, we laid out the difficulty yeah, I'll, here. I'll play Zay Jones with his starting quarterback. Sure. Wow, over Juju's been pretty good. I mean, it's like, till what do we got? Ten for eighty-eight this past week. Nine for seventy-four with a touchdown the week before that. Yeah, I don't. I guess I don't mind if you go that direction. It it's that's a very very difficult start sit question. That hopefully you don't Zay have to Jones, answer. Yeah, you know, Hopkins is the one. Ju Hop Juju is anywhere from the one to the six on any given week. Hopkins should see 10 targets in this game. Yeah. Sure, yes. Like he yes. he should absolutely get 10 force fed targets. I'm sure they'll have a screen or 3 set up for him just because the offense is going to be struggling. They're like we just got to get the ball in his hands. So I do think he has a baseline. What's the latest report on Cole McCoy? Cuz I mean Jason, you're facing DeAndre yeah, Hopkins this week. I know. Week. I'm well aware and I'm uh, <laughs> pretty get healthy Colt. <laughs> you stay you take your time on this concussion. Um I do know on the drive in local uh sports radio was saying that they are presuming that it will be Trace McSorley. Starting. What about David Blau? Ah, blah. Ah, ah. Uh he would be better for sure for Hopkins <laughs> than Trace McSorley. Um, oh, it's a night game, so Blau can play. 
Oh, that's right. Due he, to the vampire I nature. I can't even remember why he's a vampire. Because why of, is David Blau a vampire? We couldn't say his name, I think. No, we didn't it know was, it was no, it's, it, <laughs> no, it is. It's Hotel Transylvania. I don't say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> is that what that was? Yes. I, I that's like, where it was for me. I'm thinking if I'm a listener of the show and I don't go back three <laughs> years to David Blau, I'm thinking like, how is that a vampire? Blau. David Blau. <laughs> And there blah, you have it. Blah, blah. <laughs> there you have it. Very clearly explained. <laughs> and he only plays night games because of the sun and yeah. the dangers. Well, it would it would turn him into dust. What about domes? Oh, I could play there. That's fine, as okay. long as it's not UV lights. <laughs> I don't then, think there's a lot of UV emitting stadium lights. I'm I'm just laying out all the variables. I don't think they make those. <laughs> it's not a it's not a um tanning booth <laughs> for the whole crowd <laughs> y'all want to get tan hey you know you it's, you get those that's new that's a new uh you get some of the vitamins i guess in those sun. cold weather cities like yeah you, know, you gotta got the get the lights i gotta, they you gotta take out. care of it it's very dark oh ah, ah, ah. all right well that'll do it uh 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern spotify live this afternoon join us on the party room the second to last party room of the year so we want to see you there stay safe everybody we'll see you tonight goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers